Okay, can you guys hear me now? Just trying to get this all figured out. Testing, testing. Okay. All right, so it looks like we're getting, people are saying they can hear me. Great, thank you guys so much for your patience. I so appreciate it. All right, so let's get started. I did get to look at the poll that you guys did and um, <clears throat> it looks like the majority of people were either watching TV or doing a meditation, which I'm really pleased to see. So we're gonna talk a lot about um, more things you can do when you're not sleeping and hopefully get you sleeping better. But a couple of things to start out, this presentation's about a half hour. Um, be sure to stay until the end. We have some special offers at the end. And if for any reason you get disconnected, you will get a link with this for a replay within the next 24 hours so you can go back and you can look at the slides if there's anything that you missed. Also, it seems like a lot of you have found the little text box in the bottom right hand corner, but <clears throat> if you have any comments or at the end, we'll have a little time for some questions. So feel free to bring up those questions as well. All right, well, let's get going. So first of all, my name is Kara Slater. I am a physician here at Desert Wellness Center. And today we are talking all things sleep. Um, I chose this topic because this is one of the most common concerns that people come into my office. We are either dealing with the main concern is insomnia or we start talking and we realize, gosh, you're actually not sleeping that well and it's affecting other parts of your health. So how common is insomnia? Well, you're not alone. In 2005, um, a sleep National Sleep Study Foundation poll found that more than half of people have at least one symptom of insomnia. This includes difficulty falling asleep, waking up a lot during the night, waking up too early, you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning, you finally get to sleep, usually right before your alarm goes off, um, or simply just waking up unrefreshed. And I wouldn't be surprised if this number is actually higher now with everything that's going on. We're all under a lot more stress, which um, can definitely affect our sleep. The goals of today's webinar are to um, give you some easy at home tips that you can start today to get you sleeping better. I want to talk about more than medications, the natural sleep alternatives that we have to get you sleeping better. And then I want to discuss the commonly overlooked and often missed really key pieces of insomnia. So these are the root causes that we often don't think about, but when we address these, you not only are sleeping better, but oftentimes having more energy, um, feeling refreshed when you wake up, and these are long-term solutions. So what does our body do while we're sleeping? When, oh, I, and I, I have to count so you guys can finally see this little picture. Sorry, I missed that. How cute is this little gal? But how many people can relate when you're not sleeping and you end up fiddling on your phone for hours at night? Not a good scenario, but probably we don't look as cute as she does. Um, so while we're sleeping, our body is resetting our immune system. We are doing muscle growth and repair. We're creating our long-term memories. We're organizing the events from the day, all the things you learned. We release growth hormone, which is actually really important in anti-aging. We're fighting inflammation. And sleep is actually a key component in weight loss. A very common story is people saying they have been working out a whole bunch. They're counting their calories and they're just not getting the results they want. 
Well, when we start to look deeper and get to those underlying causes, then we get you sleeping better and all of a sudden that scale can start to move. The other plus is that a lot of the underlying contributors to poor sleep also can affect our weight balance. So when we start correcting these, everything starts to work a little bit better. Sleep is really important also for lowering our cortisol levels, which I think a lot of us can relate that right now that's really important with times of high stress. And lastly, we're removing waste from cells. Bottom line is that sleep is a foundation of our health. We really cannot be at our very best without getting good sleep. So let's do another quick poll. Um, we all know what we want to be doing while we're sleeping, right? Everything that's supposed to go on. What are some of the most bothersome symptoms for you when you're not sleeping? So that next day, what do you notice the most? Um, everybody can click on there and let's just see what we all feel. And while we're doing this, I have to tell a funny story that while I was practicing this um, presentation, I practiced for my husband and we were laying on the couch in the evening and I started this sleep presentation and I looked over and by golly, he was snoring away after about 10 minutes. So maybe that's a key to getting better sleep also. <laughs> Um, awesome. So we're getting some good res responses here. Um, it looks like a lot of people really notice these mood changes, anxiety, depression, insom um, irritability, and then the brain fog. Some of us crave those foods as well. So great. Thank you guys for doing that. All right. So yes, all of those are really, really common effects of poor sleep. I know that personally, just one night of poor sleep can have me feeling irritable. I'm craving those carbs, brain fog. You feel like you're just walking through molasses during the day. You just can't seem to be sharp. Um, it's lowering libido. We're in a cranky mood. And think about that's just one night. When this is a chronic issue, it's affecting us on so many levels. It's increasing our risk for diabetes, increasing our risk for heart disease, weight gain. And it's also big for those aches and pains. Sometimes it's aches and pains that are keeping us up at night. And when we're not sleeping, that's just compounding on each other, right? And it's this vicious cycle getting worse and worse. But the good news is that we have a lot of solutions. So oftentimes when we can get you sleeping better, not only will these mood symptoms improve, sometimes anxiety can resolve completely. Um, so there's a lot of great options to get you feeling better. All right, so one of the most common stories that I hear is that we're not sleeping well, we go to our health professional and all it is is here, take this pill and we didn't really go much deeper. Sometimes the sleeping pills can be really, really helpful, but sometimes they aren't even that helpful or they have these undesired side effects. If this sounds familiar to you, it's time to take a deeper look. I find that when we address some of these hidden underlying causes, we can have great results. One of the biggest contributors that I see is hormones. Yes, hormones are affecting our sleep-wake cycle. They, in fact, are what regulate it to begin with. Melatonin and cortisol are what are helping us to regulate waking up and going to bed. But on top of that, the most common hormones that I see being out of balance and really having a big effect on sleep are thyroid hormones, estrogen and progesterone, testosterone and cortisol, which is again, often thought of as that stress hormone. And hormones all work together. So maybe one of these is off, but oftentimes if one is off, it can affect all of them. So it's really important to take, take a deep look at these. Also hormones do not discriminate. 
So yes, this affects men. Yes, they affect women and they affect all different ages. Um, personally, I want to talk a little bit about my sleep journey. So I was going to sleep, basically feeling exhausted all day. Can't make it through the day. I just want to get back to bed, right? Finally time to go to sleep. My head hits the pillow and boom, my brain is on. And I decided that it was a good time to solve all of my problems, problems that didn't even really exist throughout the night. And then I wake up in the morning and I'm exhausted. I haven't slept all night. I've had racing thoughts, wired and tired is what I would kind of call it. Um, if this sounds familiar to you, it's time to check your hormones. Another frequent story that I have patients come in tell me is that they are, oftentimes women are falling asleep, waking up and feeling super hot, hot flashes, night sweats, we're throwing off those covers and then all of a sudden you get cold, you throw back on the covers and finally get back to sleep and then you repeat the whole cycle again. And then by the time you're ready to wake up in the morning, you feel like you haven't had a wink of sleep, you're exhausted. This is a time to check those hormones. And not only can we often get you sleeping better, but we're getting to the root cause. So we're resolving those hot flashes and night sweats as well. I wanna make sure we touch on the cortisol stress piece. Lately, I know a lot of people have been experiencing new onset of sleep issues. So maybe before this, you never really had any issues sleeping, but with a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world today, increased stress levels, all of a sudden we're not sleeping well. So this is where fixing the underlying cause is so valuable. We can look at not only your levels, but also help to support your ability to manage stress throughout the day and get you sleeping better at night. So the good news with all of this is that we test these and we can fix not only your sleep, but oftentimes we get you having a better mood, more energy, balancing your weight, um, healthy aging. You're just feeling more energetic, more vibrant. Um, so who, how can this be anything that someone doesn't want to join in on? So if the, any of that sounds familiar, it's really time to take a deeper look at your hormone levels. Um, so I think a lot of people, if you've had any trouble sleeping, you have tried several different things. So let me know what are, let's do another poll here. If you guys are up for it, what have you tried to improve your sleep? What treatments have you tried? I'll give you guys just a minute here to answer these. Awesome. So we're getting a lot of good feedback here. It looks like some people have tried it all. Um, definitely people have tried the natural sleep supplements and some relaxation and meditation. Fabulous. So you guys are in the right place because it looks like a lot of you have kind of done a lot of these things already. And I know we can go to Sprouts and get every new, you know, this is best for your sleep. But this is where getting to the root cause can really, really make a difference. So um, awesome. And I really applaud everyone who's doing that um, relaxation and meditation. Um, such a handy thing, not only for sleeping, but just our health in general. All right. So we really cannot talk about getting to the root cause of sleep concerns unless we talk about nutrients. So nutrients, they are simple, they have multiple benefits, and they're often overlooked. My top three nutrients for sleep that are commonly missed are magnesium, vitamin D, and B vitamins. So these start with diet, right? We cannot think we're going to have all of the nutrients we need unless we start with a healthy diet where we're eating a lot of fruits and veggies, 
good quality protein and fats and trying to avoid those processed foods, sugars, things like that. But even when we have the healthiest of diets, a lot of us still need a little bit of support for these nutrients. Magnesium is an awesome mineral that is calming in general for us, but it's also really great for muscle relaxation. If you have muscle aches, aches and pains that are keeping you up at night, this is a great tool to bring in. Um, next, vitamin D. So vitamin D is often thought of as the sunshine vitamin. We can get vitamin D from the sun. And studies have shown that people who are low in vitamin D actually have more poor sleep quality and quantity. So this is a really important nutrient that we often don't think about when we're thinking sleep. Lastly, B vitamins. When we think B vitamins, we usually think energy. And this is absolutely true. However, B vitamins are actually really important in our body's ability to make melatonin, which we use to sleep. And then I know we mentioned earlier, and a lot of you had said that mood issues were one of the biggest concerns when you're not sleeping. So anxiety, depression, irritability, B vitamins can actually be really helpful in improving mood. So this can be something that we use in adjunct to improving your mood while we're also getting your sleep on track. And it is really good for energy. So I love to use B vitamins as energy support. So maybe we're not reaching for quite as many cups of coffee during the day. But with all of these, it's really important to test. Test, don't guess. We can do all the testing here and then we can decide on the exact form of the vitamin that you need and the right dosing because it's different for everybody. And it's really important to be within the right range of all of these. Okay. So we can't have a sleep talk unless we go here. Yes, we're talking about our best friends and our worst enemies, sugar, caffeine, and alcohol. Um, I know that I personally am guilty of all of this. We're in a safe place and I luckily can't see any of you guys, so I won't know who's answering what, but I'd love to do another poll and see who, um, what you reach for, right? When you've had a sleepless night, What's the thing that you're like, I need to go for that? Or maybe you're going for everything. So let's take a moment and um, let's see what your go-tos are. I'm seeing some coffees already. <laughs> I think we can all attest to that one. <laughs> Sometimes just the smell can help, right? Awesome. So... I'm seeing definitely the majority of us are reaching for that caffeine, the coffee. Some of us want it all. Um, very few, oh, okay, a couple people, the carbs and sugars, because I know I am guilty of that one. When I don't sleep, I am reaching for the snacks all day. Um, so basically with these, we get into this vicious cycle, right? We wake up in the morning feeling tired. Usually that's when we actually are finally able to sleep is right before the alarm's gonna go off. So first thing we'll do is grab for that coffee. Then I know personally, I'll eat breakfast. On my way, I swear 30 minutes after I've eaten, I'm ready for something crunchy, salty, sweet to just keep me alert, keep me awake. So we're usually snacking more all day on things that we probably shouldn't be eating. And then oftentimes reaching for that second cup of coffee in the afternoon so that we can make it through the rest of the day, cook dinner, do all of those things. And then by the end of the night, when we actually want to go to sleep, we're super zipped. So then we often will reach for a drink, right? To kind of unwind and relax. Well, unfortunately, these are horrible for our sleep and they really, really do have a big impact. Um, but there's little things that we can do. So simply by avoiding that second cup of coffee in the afternoon, you might notice a huge difference in your sleep. But for those of you who are saying, I'm ready to get off of this wagon, I want to re reset, we have awesome programs and support to help you 
kind of clean the slate. Let's get out of this vicious cycle, get you feeling good, because we know that, yes, we're using all these things to make it through the day, but then we sleep like crap and we wake up feeling exhausted the next day. We also have so many wonderful natural supplements and nutrients that are really helpful for those sugar cravings, getting you on a healthy diet, natural energy support. I was talking about the B vitamins earlier, but we have a lot of wonderful things that are going to actually support your sleep and support your energy. And then wonderful things to help you relax in the evening. So <clears throat> we have a lot of tools to get you out of the cycle because we're all guilty of it. All right. Now we can't really have a sleep talk unless we are talking about the foundations, sleep hygiene. Everybody has heard of these, right? But we sometimes need that gentle reminder. Um, creating a bedtime routine. So this means that we are not doing work in bed. We are not supposed to be watching TV in bed. We are training ourselves that when we're in bed, we're supposed to be relaxed, we're calming down, and we're getting ready for sleep. It can be as simple as starting this routine and you can start to actually feel like you're sleeping a little bit deeper. All right, this is the big one, avoiding screens. Um, I'm absolutely guilty of this. It's hard because screens are everywhere, but they really do actually disrupt our ability to make melatonin and they're gonna be waking your brain up when we're trying to get it to go to sleep. So my recommendation, a new and novel idea is to read a book, a good old fashioned book. Yes, they are still around and you can, I mean, there's actually some really fun ones that will get your mind off of not only all the things you have to do, you know, during the day, but they're going to make your eyes a little more tired, get you into that sleepy mode and Hey, who knows? You might learn something new. Um, eating right before bed. We are supposed to be doing all of those things we talked about before. We're resetting our immune system. We're kind of cleaning out all of our cells. We don't want to be digesting all of this food. So eating right before bed is also a no-no. I put melatonin on here because although it's not a solution for everybody and some people don't tolerate it as well, melatonin is really important for our sleep cycle. And for some people, it's that little reminder, oh yeah, you know, maybe I'll try that again and it can actually be really helpful. Um, one of the wonderful things about all the electronics that we have these days is we have guided meditations, guided breathing, right at our fingertips. And this can be a great way to just unwind. And for some of us, it means your alone time, right? So it's no kids, um, you know, your partner, you can just have those five minutes of being really quiet. And that can sometimes just calm the mind, get you into a good place for sleep. And then the last bullet point here, not necessarily something that you're doing right before bed, but in general, getting some movement is key to sleeping later in the night. So this could mean a 20 minute walk in the morning before it's too hot, or maybe a little walk in the evening or simply just some yoga at home during the day. But you'll be surprised that when this becomes the habit, you actually start to sleep better. And the key with all of these, this may not be right the end all be all answer when you start doing these, but if we build the foundation any other treatments that we do are going to be so much more effective. So this is the stuff you can start tonight and just see if you notice little improvement. But bottom line is don't settle for poor sleep. We know it's so important, right? And we have solutions. You do not have to be sleeping poorly. We can get to the root cause and find long-term solutions that not only are you going to be sleeping well, but then you're not, you're waking up energized. We don't have to worry about all those, the side effects that maybe are undesirable with some of those medications. Oftentimes your mood is improving um, and you're just waking up and feeling refreshed. And I think when I was thinking about this and thinking about what I value most in my sleep, it's not, I'm not thinking about what my cells are doing at night while I'm sleeping. I'm really thinking about what do I, how do I want to feel? And it's that I want to be able to go to bed 
not feeling anxious, excited, knowing that I'm going to get a good night's sleep, wake up in the morning, feeling refreshed, feeling motivated and ready for the day so that I can be the best partner, right? So that we can be the best parents. So we have energy to do all the adventures and vacations that we want to do. Um, so you have the clear mind at work. You're feeling motivated. You're able to reach all those goals and you can just enjoy life, right? That's really what it's all about. And we don't have to settle for poor sleep. We've got solutions. So it's time to get going. Um, all right. So we do have a couple of minutes now for some questions. So if you guys want to um, ask any questions, then I can hopefully help to answer those. And if we don't have any questions, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about the offer. So if you guys are interested in kind of addressing these root causes, seeing maybe what's going on, why you're not sleeping better, then we have a special offer for $50 off of a new patient visit with me. And um, if you, you can call the office or you can check out our website if you have more questions on kind of what it's like to be a new patient here at Desert Wellness, um, any of those things. But I'm so appreciative of your guys' time today and your participation with all of the polls that we did. It was really helpful. And um, it was great to be able to share this with you guys. Um, so the presentation, I'm gonna leave up this offer here for the next um, couple minutes. And let's see, is it, I think it's up. All right, perfect. So this will be up. Um, and like I said, if you guys want to schedule a visit, I recommend calling. If you have any other questions, you want to look at more about what we can offer here, check out our website. And it was such a pleasure to be able to speak with you all today. Take care.